Okay, so just to get first a few of the terminology out of the way. So when I say tenon foot or a spigot, this is what I mean. So this is a tenon um, in a woodworking world. Uh, this is most common as a male piece. Uh, so we grip on the outside or do compression on this tenon and we hold it like this if my hand my fingers were the jaw so i would hold it like this now and the other option would be this so this is a recess or a mortise or in a, a woodworking uh, jargon let's say a female piece and we hold this ball let's say on the leg by expanding the jaws into uh, this recess which can be either a straight in or a slight dovetail depends on the jaws you have um, now, I would highly suggest that you avoid uh, serrated uh, jaws, much like um, uh, from one way, I think, and I think some of the other manufacturers also have those, and uh, I'll put on the screen the picture. Uh, so the serrated, the really, really tiny uh, teeth or serrations really don't do much uh, in terms of like holding it better or expanding it um, with more uh, strength let's say or anything so just avoid it get a simple dovetail these are much more versatile and uh, much better in terms of hold so i highly suggest going with dovetail jaws so i found this on the shelf and uh, should be good for what i want to show you here so um the wood is much stronger when you want to compress it so usually if you do everything right so this is the grain going like this um, usually uh, when you compress it like that it won't break uh, you'll be much better secured instead like uh, going with a recess like in this case here so this was probably uh, was going to be a sort of a lid for an um, end grain box. So if I put this in a step jaws here and close the jaws, you'll see I can do, although it's hollow, I can put quite a bit of pressure and that's not going anywhere and it did not split or anything like that. So especially if you have the jaws in almost perfect circle then uh, you'll be gripping on the entire face especially when it's hollow if it's full or solid um, then you don't have any problems like putting even too much pressure on uh, but if you have a recess like this and let me just grab another chuck so if i place the jaws into this uh, shoulder here and open them up much like what you do with uh, with the recess and if I tighten it just ever so slightly lightly really lightly nothing will happen um, and, but I'm not quite secure you can see I should be able to tighten this a little bit more okay so I'm at the point I sort of feel if I expand a little bit more I will split this along the grain here I'm at the so, point of breaking let's say so uh, again grain is running this way um, and that's the weakest it's much like if you want to split with an axe you would hit and the end grain like this and split it so basically the same is happening here and if I go a little bit more I hear here cracks already and yeah oh, that's opened up quite a bit so yeah. this is a good indicator that when you have the uh, spindle blank like this it's always better if you compress the tenon or the wood so holding with the jaws on the outside holding like this uh, because you won't be able to break it easily especially when it's uh, solid like this end here um, so try to avoid especially when you have thinner stuff like this uh, to expand the jaws because this will happen so i found this on the shelf which will be a really good indicator of grabbing the foot and uh, expanding into a recess like this uh, now um, i think this was from um, sort of a prototype job that i did uh, with the handles for a client uh, now this is most likely that you have a scenario let's say so this is a grain line running like this and this was shaped or worked on much like with the ball and uh, we have here a tenon a really small tenon you can see here if i 
bring the ruler that's two mil something like that so really shallow and I should be able to grip this without too much trouble and tightened real hard so you can see that's really hold on for a small foot and you can work and uh, um, now this goes obviously for bigger uh, balls as well however you would slightly deepen the the tenon but in this case this was okay this is a small piece but let's see here in this case we have a recess on a, with a small outside ridge left much like in this case here and uh, many uh, beginner turners will make like a tall foot like this and make a recess on the inside so if you imagine uh, this as a bottom or a bottom of the ball so like something like this but only a larger ball, ball here on the top so this is a recess that you would expand your jaws in so this should expand that far without too much problem so that's so that's now lightly holding it on and yeah so what will happen and I just lightly open this up uh, this will be fine for now and uh, now what can happen on the lead if you have and with all time the jaws will loosen up on every chuck no matter which one you have uh, with um, forces uh, I think it's called centrifugal force uh, the jaws will slightly opened up uh, it's a micro uh, opening up like uh, in terms of length uh, so what can happen when you tighten this up and you think oh I tightened this slightly everything is fine when you turn on the lathe it can happen that the jaws will open up ever so slightly and break off the uh, the little chunk here that it's left uh, or wall thickness here that it's left so if I open up this a little bit more now not sure if you're going to able to see this how this bottom portion where the recess is is sort of like swollen here hopefully you can see that here so if I open up this a little bit more uh, at one section it will break off so let's do that a little bit more and now we have a failure you can see here where the jaws opened up and let's see if we have another place no just that one spot so let's go one more there we go so that's a failure so you can see here major uh, split so when would uh, this spin on the lathe this would probably just fly off and uh, it won't be pleasant at all so I'm highly advocating that you grip the tenons instead of opening up in a recess as much as you can uh, now there are instances where I use the recess and I'll show that in a few seconds but here on even though this is a much smaller tenon here and be able to uh, put uh, way too much force on it and still uh, won't be able to break it so that's I can't go any further really nice and secure and I can't uh, tighten it up even more so that's really nice and solid and uh, the, again the wood is uh, not failing in this case when you compress the tenon so mentioned that I use recess uh, from time to time especially on um, plates and platters because ideally this is a quite big platter uh, from birch you can see it here and um, ideally I would like to grip by this outer foot but I don't have a big enough jaws for this so I would cut a recess here and expand but in this case the recess is okay because you can see I have all of this timber here um, uh, supporting the the expansion and everything is nicely secured so if you go watch any of my videos where I did uh, recess on plates or platters bigger bigger plates uh, then you'll see that I have enough wood on the outside uh, to be able to comprehend the expansion forces here so um, in this case if I only have 
if I only have like this small of a ridge on the outside, I would not uh, expand the jaws into this because this will just lightly break off without too much problem. So just be aware where you use recess and um, what are the forces, how big the piece is as well. So let's say for the smaller um, recess, I want to use, uh, let's go for, so I'll be using this one here and uh, now obviously this is not proportioned but you'll see a lot of videos that they use something this size uh, to hold a blank like this which I, again I highly suggest that you upgrade to slightly bigger jaws if you can uh, so uh, we need a recess here uh, and we need a little measurement or we can do this by eye roughly uh, so So that should be okay, a little bigger, okay, so we'll make a recess from this point in. Now I'm going to show you how I go about this if I'm making a, a recess like this. This one uh, was one of my first ever bowls that I made uh, from Elm and uh, you can see all of this is just a big hole on the bottom. and. Uh, I still have enough wood here, so I'll probably uh, return this and may uh, reshape it a little bit and get a tenon here or a foot or something, so it's a little bit more pleasant. Uh, but it, it served well and there's nothing wrong with, like using this, just be aware that you have enough wood here on the sides and this is actually getting quite close to, um, if there is a hidden split that you might not see, you'll just break this in half. So just be aware of that. Usually what I would use here to open up for the jaws is a square end scraper, a smaller, narrower one. Uh, but I understand that not many will have that kind of tool, but most of will have a parting tool like this. So you can use that to open up the, uh, the, the, the hole here. So go, up to the line and straight in like this so that's around two mil another mil so that's three and let's open up for uh, another uh, thickness of the tool So if you want the recess to work properly here, uh, you want this surface to be nice and flat uh, without many major humps and you want the jaws, the corners of your jaws to go into the corner of the recess here. So you cannot have it um, suspended and get it like in the middle of the recess. So you have to go right into the corner. Um, now these jaws, have a dovetail on the outside. Now there are few manufacturers that have a straight sided jaws. Um, I would highly again suggest dovetail because these are much more superior. Now to cut that dovetail I don't measure it um, in terms that I need to copy the exact angle. You don't need to do that. Slight dovetail will be uh, enough to locate the the jaws properly inside and expand and you'll be okay so the way i like to use that or to make that uh, dovetail is with a skew so this is straight in but i want to uh, dovetail it so i would uh, push it to the side let's say to a few degrees five ten degrees and go to the line and just lightly push it in until you bottom out and now you can if you want you can uh, progress to the side here but all I want with the skew is get that slight dovetail in the corner and again this is not flat this area here in this case is much higher than uh, the corner here so the jaws will sit somewhere around here and will be suspended from the uh, corner which is quite bad because that will introduce a lot of vibration so I need to bring this down a little bit more I'll do that with a parting tool get it nice and flat there you go so that's now flat on the inside and again don't remove this section uh, use it 
uh, first of all you will be able to go slightly maybe deeper on the inside of the ball because if this is gone then you'll have um, quite thin let's say bottom uh, but in this case this will sort of save you let's say from blowing out or making a funnel so uh, you can use this wood here to shape to get uh, any decoration that you want so that's what I'm going to do just grab a spindle gouge and make something here Okay, so that's good enough. It's better than having a nice solid hole, let's say. Uh, so we can now test the, the fit. And this is roughly uh, around three and a half mil, three mil uh, deep recess. So now the jaws are um, much more open than ideally here. Um, you would want these to be closed in a relative perfect circle and then expand a little bit but this is for a, a demo purpose so this will just go in they locate it nice and flat on the on the bottom so the important thing here is uh, the next stage and that is uh, leave yourself here enough wood uh, so you don't break it out so if you want to make um, let's say um, a small foot like this let's say like this make sure that your recess is deeper than the, the, the ridge that you're going to put it here so what I mean by that is if I just grab the, the parting to just to make this so I made that roughly one mil, mil and a half and I'll just quickly remove this waste wood here. So this is the important step. If you want to make a sort of a foot like this, the ring, make sure that your foot, uh, sorry, the recess inside is deeper than this foot here. Uh, if they are in the same plane, then obviously the, the expansion would want to break this off uh, but going slightly deeper uh, with the recess on the inside than the the foot rim here and then you expand actually into more solid wood behind so hopefully that makes sense so this is a little diagram uh, so this is our dovetail uh, recess the jaws are here expanding into this way and you can see that the recess is deeper if i drew like this is deeper than this section of the foot which is this edge here a rim and uh, if they are in the same plane and then the forces are in line let's say and this will want to fail but if you make the recess slightly deeper then the forces are into this solid wood here so hope that makes sense it's not ideal it's not better than holding it by the uh, tenon uh, but uh, if I have to do the recess this is uh, how I would do this so I uh, hope this clears uh, clarified this a little bit at least <coughs> so let's say this is a rough out uh, ball so I'll be using these step jaws to to make the tenon here to grab it and uh, now roughly I want the tenon to be one third of the diameter so so let's say roughly slightly bigger than that so somewhere around here the tenon should be fine so for now I just want to remove this section and get a little ball shape so um, for the tenon here I don't go any smaller in this so I'll just quickly shape the ball here
so what the tenon is so um you have uh, several different jaws option um i think one way makes uh, with a sort of that you can make a square tenon like this um preferably like i said in the beginning i want a dovetail jaws so these jaws not sure about the correct angle i don't care about that uh, so the angle is i believe around 12 or 13 or 14 degrees and again i don't measure this i don't care about the angle sorry about the focus and uh, so the tenon in this case will have ball shape like this and then we'll have a tenon here slight dovetail now the drawing isn't perfect uh, but this is what will end up so um, this is one option to get the tenon right into the bottom of the bowl the the other option is uh, let me draw another not my a game i'm usually quite good at drawings but today is not my drawing day i guess um, another option that i like to do is make a step and then a dovetail foot and another step here so i'll just grab a ball from the uh, shelf here you can see here that extra step so the jaws will uh, grip by this smaller tenon and later down the road I want to have this kind of option maybe I want to leave this as a foot and then remove the tenon completely so I want to leave myself with different options I don't do this all the time but if I have the piece that uh, looks to be proportionally better with a wider foot bigger diameter then I would leave that wood here I I can always take it back uh, take it off once the ball is dry uh, but you cannot glue it back on so um, again this is another option that you can do now um, if I core out if I'm trying to core the ball out I would always make this kind of uh, shoulder so the jaws will rest here and because you're putting a lot of pressure here at the side of the ball uh, you have to have a really nice bite but you can see here most of my tenons this is five six mil deep i don't go any further than that uh, this is even too much maybe so four mil tops is all that you need in terms of tenon if that's going to fail then your uh, deeper tenon will also fail uh, without too much issue so uh, the biggest problem with tenon failure is if you put too small of a tenon on a bigger ball uh, what that means is there is a lot of shear action shear force going on a small foot like this tenon that you're grabbing uh, which most cases happen when you buy your first chuck uh, you buy it with the standard jaws and we'll all be there and um, you grab a big ball like this let's say uh, you grab with a small foot and then again when you make a little bigger bite or um, doing a little bit too much force uh, there is a lot of force going on with this small uh, diameter of wood and of course it will just shear off the the tenon completely and uh, now when that happens i've saw on uh, many uh, facebook posts don't glue it back in don't do that um, just uh, pro uh, probably if that happens uh, then just make the ball back on the lathe and just cut a wider tenon or um, do something else uh, don't glue the that tenon back on and uh, doesn't matter that it's sheared off and you think you glue it back on perfectly just don't do that uh, it's not worth that uh, you have another tenon failure because once you may be lucky if this kind of size ball fly off the lathe but don't take your chances and uh, do the second time and uh, so on so just be aware if you're going to turn bigger balls deeper balls um, where a lot of pressure can be exerted here at the rim um, getting a bigger size jaws are much much better so even it's better to have a bigger foot than it's needed than to have it really really small and uh, again 
you can uh, go with the recess here but for uh, coring and uh, just for bigger balls just avoid having a, a recess it's much better to have a tenon like this and again i've never had tenon failure other uh, than i'm putting like a really small tenon on a really large ball so that will sh just shear it off immediately so just be aware of that now probably this will sound controversy again and uh, i know there are a lot of tournaments that won't uh, that will disagree with me and that's okay we everything uh, we turn different ways and that's perfectly fine now i have here a set of uh, one set of jaws and you can see the dovetail portion here now i don't care about this angle at all so i do not try to get this perfectly uh, matched on the wood on the tenon um, if you do want to do that perfectly fine if you want that um, i'll show you different options that you can do uh, you can do like a diamond a scraper that's shaped to this angle um, you can use a skew and i'll show all that options uh, but all of my tenons are cut using a spindle gouge and then just roughly by eye i make that dovetail does it match in most cases not uh, but it's perfectly fine uh, once you compress the wood especially the wet wood it will compress and uh, it will hold on really really tight um, and you won't have any issues with that so hopefully that clarifies that that issue let's say for somebody and again this is my approach how i cut tenons and my thoughts and my opinion on this but if you have any other methods feel free to use them nothing wrong now one of the most common method to cut a tenon is using a skew now there is a wrong way to do this and uh, i don't say often the wrong way but in this case um, it's much easier to do it the right way let's say um, I'm not sure if what I said just makes sense, but anyway, um, the way you want to have this now, this uh, skew is actually uh, at an angle roughly as the jaws itself by coincidence. And if I line that bevel here at the top to make it perpendicular to uh, or straight like this, straight across, perpendicular to the lathe axis, if I just push it straight in. As you can see that's without any effort and I make a nice perfect dovetail portion and let me show you here at the horizon up here hopefully you can see that over here these are so, again those same jaws and if I place them here you can see that's pretty good match here and uh, I'm actually done this by a high end look, looking quite good uh, now there is another school of thought that you have to have this section here resting fully flat on the jaws now again if you're doing coring then yes i would suggest that you do that because a lot of forces will be uh, pushing the rim of the ball and you don't want this uh, action uh, the jaws will stay put but the wood wants to vibrate and uh, that's not good when you're coring uh, but if you're just making a piece like this rough out on the outside and you're just going to hug out the inside you just have to have a nice clean corner here as my mentor taught me uh, so nice clean corner where the jaws will rest and this will compress and this will tight everything nicely together with the chuck and this will be perfectly fine uh, but you have to again have nice clear here corner and tenon without any obstruction at all so uh, just bear that in mind so nice clean tenon without any uh, obstruction now i mentioned the wrong way of cutting this with the skew and that is going into this way uh, now you can do it but uh, first of all you have to uh, negotiate the skew like in this direction but also you're facing the grain uh, the end grain sorry and that's really much tougher uh, now this is partially a dried uh, blank uh, but it's not uh, you can see here you're making dust instead of shavings but going here 
into side grain it's much more easier much more comfortable and you're just scraping the side grain and that's it so again nice clean tenon and uh, now another method is using something like a diamond shape scraper now i don't own uh, any of that uh, this is the closest i have this is a spear point scraper uh, with a curved side so this won't work uh, as good uh, but uh, you can match this angle on the uh, uh, diamond shape scraper and I think Glenn Lucas has uh, this kind of method to cut the tenons and you would shape the the wings here the angles to match like this on your jaws and this by again by co coincidence is not that far off uh, so again here is a problem let's say if you just jab this in like this on both sides of the wood so you're cutting or scraping on the right and the left portion and that's uh, no bueno because um, you probably will take too much this is quite shallow tenon but if you take way too much uh, or have a deeper tenon then it will want to grab and just turn it out to your hand so just be aware of that now the way you want to cut this is again going only into this direction so to the left only cutting the side grain portion here so this will look like this so again i'm not putting any pressure forward just putting the pressure to the left while i'm here just clean this up a little bit and just show you that's another clean tenon and hopefully you can see a nice clean tenon without any obstructions here so and uh, the angle is by luck again matched uh, I don't shape these tools to again uh, these angles but you can make it work if you just pay attention a little bit if you want that kind of precision let's say the final method uh, the method I learned from my mentor Richard Raffen and uh, I really like this it's sort of a it's so easy for me at least and works for me and uh, now I can cut it with a small spindle gouge I can cut it with a, a bigger one this is 12 mil uh, usually I cannot do this with the bow gouge uh, because uh, of the shape of the asymmetric grind uh, gouge uh, it has a little bit more of a curve or this wing actually will interfere and I won't get nice clean corner which I want in this case so uh, usually spindle gouges have a really nice um, acute angles and a uh, little more shallower wings and to get this done again I drop the handle way down and raise it to pivot the edge in the wood like this and just raising the handle will get you the edge inside now this is almost like a square across tenon so if I just move my body more to the the ball to the left I'll get more of the angle if I want and the important thing here is you ended up like this so you're raising the handle it's almost flat into the corner here and now just drag it open the gouge ever so slightly and just drag it out and I'll show you again this is a nice clean tenon without any obstructions any interference here hopefully you we'll be able to see this so nice clean tenon even cleaner because we're cutting the uh, the sides here and you can see a nice crisp corner now does the angle match let's see well it does it's really really close uh, but let's see how it fits with the chuck itself and again this is around four mil uh, tenon but just in case I want to uh, chew this up a little bit so 
while, while I have this uh, spear point scraper here, I'm going to use it. So this is now 3 mil tenon and this will fit in the chuck really nicely. There we go. And it's running nice and true, you can see here. And we can see here, hopefully, how the, the tenon, oops, and we can see here hopefully how the, the chuck is working here. So again, a little gap here at the top, but that won't matter too much because again, I'm not coring this piece out. The angle is quite good, um, although I'm not concerned about that at all, but I want to get the corners of the jaws into the corner here of the wood and that's done here. And this is really rock solid and you won't have any problems uh, going with this method now. Let's see what happens if I make a square across tenon and uh, Usually what we'll see when you open up the jaws like that you'll see eight corners digging in uh, So yeah, like I said, uh, let's make a square tenon here again um, The way I like to cut this is drop the handle down rest the a spindle tip here and just raising the handle up and get it into the corner and then drag it out and that's almost square across there we go so that's square tenon okay so hopefully you can see here uh, maybe if I place the ruler uh, let's go with the focus up there you can see the the tenon is pretty much uh, square across with the very corner of the tenon and it's a nice and clean cut and uh, now someone would say that uh, that won't work with the dovetail jaws but in my experience it will work just fine especially if I just want to hollow this out sorry I'm doing this with <laughs> in front of the camera and this is now Let's just tighten it up and you'll see interesting thing here. The jaws, hopefully you can see this, uh, sort of crushed where they meet the tenon, sort of crushed their way uh, to a dovetail. Now uh, this hasn't opened up uh, anymore, uh, so these are nicely tight, a little gap uh, because this is not uh, perfectly, uh, like I said, matched to the to the jaws uh, but uh, what I'm looking for here is the angle here where the jaws dovetail jaws meet the square tenon and again this is crushing a little bit on the on the tenon making it sort of a dovetail shape hope that that makes sense now this is like I said partially dried wood blank and um, uh, on the dry stuff it's better to cut a slight dovetail uh, so you don't force it and it's more brittle let's say and the wet wood it has a little bit more give let's say so you can always crush it a little bit and uh, another test just to show you you can see the chuck is running pretty well true um, no like big wobble or anything like that uh, uh, even with the square tenon so, so you can see how they met or sort of uh, made for themselves a little uh, dovetail so hopefully that makes uh, makes sense here what I'm trying to, to point out so if somebody watch uh, pretty much all of my videos in one of my videos I said that wood turning is not NASA science this is not exact science that this has to be um, sort of a, like like i said uh you know exact measurement exact angles uh that yeah, i don't know you have to have on the ball gout just exact angle uh on the skews exactly it doesn't work like that you're just killing the point of uh, handmade wood turning stuff like this that's again my opinion you can disagree with me um this is my opinion and i live by this and um Today in the woodworking 
you you have all these pressure gauges uh, uh, that you know many manufacturers made and people buy um, to to I don't know set the table sign to micro micro millimeters so it's uh, parallel and everything. Uh, that's you know like a CNC quality you get, but that's not necessary. That you know. Um, if it looks square, if it's close to square, then it is square. Let's say so. I'll digest from uh, digressed from a, a ball turning video, but that sort of annoys me when I watch woodworking videos on YouTube. Then uh, I see all of these gauges that needs to be you know in a hundred of millimeters or thousand of millimeters accurate. That doesn't work like that. It's you'll get the same results if you get the close enough. Now, of course, if you're making big panels and um, you want to get the the best accuracy in terms of square, but for most people that do or make furniture um, square, if you have a reliable square, square and you make a jig that will cut your wood on the table saw square, and if you place the, the ruler up on that and if, if it is square then it is square you don't have to measure it um, you know like uh, going in a, um, like thousand ten thousand of a millimeter to to have the accuracy so I apply the same philosophy on wood, wood turning here I don't need to be this uh, exact angle here I don't bother with that for just hollowing out the inside you can get uh, you can open up the jaws wide and doesn't matter that the corners are digging in um, again I think a lot of users of chuck only use the chuck in perfect circle and that just ruins the, the point of the chuck. You can expand the, the jaws and grip with eight corners that will grip uh, almost equally enough for what we're trying to do here. So I know a lot of talking again, uh, not much turning, uh, but um, this is quite crucial topic and uh, in my opinion it's uh, like m most other stuff uh, over complicated so um, again in this case what I would do I have the tenon here that will, I can grip but what I would do is put another step more suitable for the uh, for the foot of this size ball let's say somewhere around here and now shape the ball here There we go, so I have the tenon here, I have the, for the future if I want to use this as a foot and I have uh, roughly shape uh, outside now, I don't bother to smooth this out because you don't have to for a roughing out stage. Now I know I've covered mostly on tenons because I don't cut recess as much and but I've shown you how I would go about if I'm making one uh, but this is the approach that I go about uh, whenever I'm making a tenon uh, either for a spindle work or with uh, uh, bowls like this cross grain work and uh, most of my spindle Tenons are square across. I don't bother with dovetail, and you don't have to either. It's not necessary. Uh, so, uh, but with the spindle blank, you have to have the shoulder. Uh, so, especially if you're hollowing out a longer piece, so it will give you a little bit more stability. So. Hopefully this little video uh, will help you out uh, or at least clarify how I go about cutting tenons and recess and uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. So. so just before you go, just want to show you, I bought a few more extra dividers because now I have uh, these step jaws that I need to get the measurements as well. And uh, so I need to cover that and I already have these three set for the chucks that I already have. Uh, this one is um, for general like uh, marking on the roughing out stage. Uh, so uh, that will be in one of the next videos. So how not to mark or how not to leave any marks on the wood with your chuck. 
and how to take the measurements and everything and how to do uh, more stuff with your chuck other than just clamping on the perfect circle so uh, stay tuned for that <laughs> 